What did you make of the game? Yeah, we need... Mikel, a much needed victory. What did you make of the game? Yeah, we needed that win. Um, it's been a while since we didn't uh, win at home. So obviously really important to get uh, the three points. We scored three fantastic goals and we have spells in the game. We had uh, some brilliant spells that we could have scored many more. And then when we conceded the goal, we looked uh, nervy. And what's your assessment of the nerviness then? Because we've seen that at different times throughout the course of the season. What did you make of the way that the players handled that? Well, that we knew the necessity to win the game um, and we wanted to put that right today. And the moment that they scored out of nothing, a counter-attack that we didn't defend well. Um, and they went man to man and they started to throw everything at you. Obviously, they know the situation that they are in. We struggle to, do, to play that kind of game after we got some control when we got uh, Thomas on the pitch and, um, and then we we'll score the winner. Three amazing goals today, Mikel. Yes, uh, they were fantastic goals and uh, we could have scored some, some more. I think we missed some big chances as well. Do you f understand that the Arsenal fans would be quite frustrated that you're able to score goals like that and that it didn't happen for you last Thursday? Yes, but um, obviously Europe is a completely different game. It was. Um, <clears throat> a different context and uh, an inch in football decides whether you're in a final or not and uh, when you need a little bit of luck it didn't happen obviously we there were things that we could have done much better and uh, it was a really tough one um but just on those goals look first premier league goal for emil first goal arsenal goal for uh, Willian as well, and a, a beautiful finish from Pepe. There's so much quality in this side, isn't there? Is it just making the tweaks elsewhere that will make sure that, you, or is it just more experience that will make sure that you don't put yourself a, in a difficult situation? It's a mix, situation? look what you are saying, is the first Premier League goal for Emil. So we are demanding him a standards here, and what he's done is still here. But he's playing at the top club, and because he's done well now, with when you get his numbers, he hasn't done that enough, and we cannot put those demands. With Willie, we, we, we have to, because he's done it in the past, and we have to demand him much more. The same with Nico, that he can do that, and he needs to do that in a more consistent way. But with the young kids, patience. Speaking of the young kids, Saka, so impressive in that left-back position. Yes, going forward, we know he's a real threat. He gives us something... Uh, Unique, uh, the same as KT. Defensively, there is a lot of things uh, to work on him with him, but um, he adapted. We knew, or we believed that we were we were going to attack against them the way they set up. And to be fair, he gave us a lot of joy. Chelsea Palace and Brighton next. What's left to fight for? Do you think? Well, we did today. Try to win every match and see what we finish. You can see. The results that are crazy still in the Premier League in this unprecedented year. So the only thing we can do is win our games. Nothing else. We cannot control anything else because at the moment, you know, in our hands. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. At the end of that game, you needed a win, didn't you? You needed that. Yeah, I feel like it was important for us to get the win today. Um, obviously, coming from Thursday, it was obviously difficult for us. But I feel like, yeah, it's a well-deserved three points for us today. What did you make of the team performance? Um, I feel like we maybe started a bit slow today. You know, our heads have been down for a couple of days and stuff, but it was important for us to bounce back. Um, but yeah, I feel like we, we got into the game, into the second half and stuff, and yeah, we're really happy with the three points. But First Premier League goal for you? You've been, yeah. I presume, dreaming about that <laughs> since you were a kid. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. It's a real feeling for me, to be fair. Um, yeah, like you said, it's been a dream playing for this club and stuff, and obviously to finally score my first goal can't be better for me, you know. You came off, was your phone blowing up with messages? I haven't checked it yet, to be fair, but, you know, obviously, yeah. It's been a difficult week, but, you know, I was always happy to get three points and score my first goal. How hard has it been, actually, for all of you? It was, you know, Mikel said it was devastating. You know, you guys were, you know, practically in tears at the end of that. How hard has it been and how difficult has it been to pick yourselves up? Um, honestly, it's been really difficult for us as a team, you know. It's not nice to lose and be out in the semi-finals of a tournament and stuff, but... 
you know, it's important that we, we keep our heads up and keep fighting until the end of the season. So that's what we're going to do. It was a good goal for you today. Good finish as well. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. And look, you you and the, the young boys have all sort of been together for a long time. You and Saka link up really, really nicely. How much do you enjoy playing together? Oh, so much, you know. Um, and I was saying to him before, he, he has to assist me because I've assisted him a few times this season as well, you know. So it was good for us to get a goal um, together and stuff. So, yeah, we're really happy with that. How much fight is there left in this side to the end of the season now? Three more games to go. So much. you know. I feel like we're all so together still and stuff and we're all going to fight for each other until the end. Um, yeah, it was obviously disappointing on Thursday, but we're just going to keep going, keep um, playing and fighting for each other. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, Neil. Interesting how he talks about heads have been down for a couple of days in the, in the wake of what happened <laughs> against Villarreal uh, on Thursday. Looking at it in isolation tonight, I mean, he'll treasure that moment today, won't he? His first Premier League goal. We're talking about somebody that's been an Arsenal fan from a young age, lived in South London, had to, his dad had to take him across to Ayland five o'clock in the morning to the point where, you know, then they ended up moving over there. They, this means the world to him to actually play for Arsenal and score for Arsenal. But, you know, he's saying about how hard they're trying and what they're trying. The kids ain't... The youngsters, him, Saka, even Martinelli, they haven't got nothing to to feel down about. They have literally saved this season for us and whatever there is to save. You know, I'm just pleased that they're continuing to, to kind of thrive and do well at a time where it's not great at the minute at the club. Yeah. He's shown his technical ability whenever he's been called upon by Mikel Arteta. And we saw that with the goal, didn't we? We did. I've been a, a big fan of his for a while, not just his technical ability, but also his enthusiasm, his desire, his his desire to make forward runs, to be in dangerous positions, to keep it on the move, which is very difficult to defend against. And you saw mm. that all in the goal. He lays it off, he finds himself a nice position, spots that there's a potential cross coming in, and finds himself a dangerous position in the penalty area. Yeah. Then he has the, the composure and the, the technical ability to finish it, because that's not an easy chance on the sidewind and volley. So uh, he's, he's been a bright spark, as it's, he has said this it's season. The, it's the one thing he wants to do as well, Leon. He wants to, he wants to add more goals. You know, he's been... He's been playing really well and he's, he's had chances in games. Things have been saved off the line. Goalkeeper's making great saves. And you can get a little bit down, but the only thing left for him to do for his game, because he's got everything, one touch, two touch, round the corner, you know, pace, is to add more goals to his game. Once he does that, we're talking about, again, you know, we're talking about him and Saka. You're, you're hoping that Arsenal can match their progression because if they don't, and people will try and take them off of us. Is that a serious concern? Maximum, ma massive, massive concern. Massive concern that Arsenal are able to sort out whatever's going on upstairs with the manager, with players that's going to come in, whoever he's going to try and bring in to try and, you know what I mean, try to execute the, whatever game plan he wants to do because these guys are going to be a major part of that. And if they can continue to play like they're playing when you're looking at how we're playing now, and it's not great, you know, you saw it against Villarreal, still waiting for the youngsters to do the stuff. If we do not progress as quickly as these guys progress, then you have to be worried about their ambitions and what they want to do because they're, they're fantastic players. And that's quite a statement. And as you said earlier, Leon, quite rightly, Arsenal has been seen as the perfect you know, uh, environment, surroundings for young players to go and hone their skills, not to be a breeding ground for talent that's going to be moved on elsewhere. No, um, but, you know, have we... Or do we currently hold Arsenal to a, a standard that they're no longer at? Because there's no getting away. Arsenal were, were one of the best teams in the country for, for so many years. But, you know, they're, they're not at this moment in time, which is a shame for Arsenal. But, you know, the, the, we're talking about the club. We're talking about the performances tonight. The young players were the, were the best players. The, mm -hmm. the positive ones have played against Arsenal many times. And you were always worried going into the game because you knew how much quality they had, how many times they'd look to play forward, how much you'd be on the back foot. Their imagination was incredible. They're going to create four or five, well, real opportunities, maybe scored. I don't feel that about Arsenal at the moment. They're the only players I look at the squad that do. The rest of the, rest <laughs> of the squad seem to be yeah. happy to play quite safe at times and, and not make forward passes. And maybe it's a, a fearless factor that young players always have when they break into the squad. They play without fear, but... That's, that's what reminds me of the old Arsenal I used to play against. I think that when you look at the new Arsenal and the way that the, the manager wants to play, like I've mentioned, it's kind of a regimented kind of way he's playing. There doesn't seem to be any X factor about it where players can go and express themselves. Mm. We don't score 
Like we saw the goals today, you know, Pepe, we haven't seen a goal like that for a long time for Arsenal. You know, even William with a free with the free kick and stuff like that. We're not seeing chances and goals made apart from the way we see them. Saka or Tierney getting down the edge of the box, crossing it, somebody getting on the end of it. We're not seeing enough shots coming from the edge of the box from people because we've created something, turned it around the corner, someone's got half a chance and they take a shot. Everything seems so like we're trying to score a perfect goal, like when we started the season against Fulham. You know, we can't do that. And once teams work us out, you see how hard it is. We're passing sideways, no passes into areas where it's dangerous, where it might get cut out, but you might be able to get in. And it's really hard to watch sometimes. Is that the players deciding to take that upon themselves? Or, or is that the instructions from the sideline? No, I, just, I think it's the instructions that they're getting and the way they're trying to play. Um, and we've seen on, on a lot of occasions, when you look at the amount of chances that Arsenal are not making and um, chances they're not creating, because it's very easy to shut Arsenal down because of the way they're trying to play out from the back. But at the same time, you know, every time a player goes on the, the field, you always play with <coughs> imagination. You always yeah. try and get yourself in these moments so that you can then create something you saw. I didn't expect that the message to Saka is different from the rest of the squad yet. When Saka gets in positions on the field, I mean, the very first time I think the ball came into his left, he was 1v1 with the fullback, and he decided to go at him. Yeah. Where you're seeing that from Saka and you're seeing that from Smith Rowe. They want to be imaginative, they want to be positive, they want to take their opportunities where, as Ian said, quite often a lot of the other ones that are passing that on are, are thinking, <coughs> I'll just pass on the responsibility to you and it's becoming methodical. You know what, Liam, when, when you watch it, like you see Saka and Smith Rowe and it is in the final third of the pitch where they do seem to have licence to go and do stuff. Mm. I'd like to see a little bit more inventiveness in and around passing out from the back, that midfielder. You know, I don't think Danny Ceballos is that guy. I do like um, somebody like Martin Erdegaard once you do get through those lines, but that's what they need to do. They need to get the energy and the passing um, coming through quicker through the team to get it to the players that can cause the damage. I don't think that happens. It doesn't happen often enough, nowhere near enough. OK, well, look, we'll pursue the questioning on Ceballos, um, Odegaard, those loanees who, whether they should st stick around or, mm -hmm. or move on. Let's build on those, those, those positives from the youngsters, <coughs> because I suppose you more than anyone would like to see Pepe come up with more goals like this, for example, when he made it 2-0. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that we know that Pepe's got a certain amount of ability about him and, uh, you know, he is our most expensive signing. We, he, he, he can do his stuff, but you, you don't see this often enough. Now, you know, you, you know, you would like to see him getting the ball and creating more, but like, we, it, I, I think that He's had a spell in the team where this season he's been a lot better and he is getting better. You would like to see more goals like this against the top teams. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, the argument of the, is the manager not telling them to do that? I can't see that. I think the manager wants to see. I know Mikel well and he, he wants to see that kind of football. He'll want to see Pepe doing that. I just don't think that, you know, when, when, when times are tough for any club, and times are tough when I have played, you do not always want to be that guy that steps up because if you miss hit the shot and it goes over the bar, people criticise you, whereas the young players play without that fear. They play, they take on that responsibility, get crosses in, score goals. I get the feeling Pepe's passed responsibility on too often, whereas when you see him perform like that, when you see that quality, you've obviously paid an awful lot of money mm. to get him in because he can do that. <coughs> I just want to see him play with a little less... Fear, I inhibition. suppose, and go, yeah, but, yeah. Ambition and go yeah. and do that more. But you, you say that as well with, with Mikel, and I'd like to think that Mikel is not, like, putting shackles on people, but for the way Arsenal have played all through the season, um, it doesn't seem to me that, that the players sit to have that kind of freedom where they can go and express themselves. Otherwise, why wouldn't they do it up to this point? You know, you even watch that game up to a certain point. They weren't expressing themselves and doing anything until they got that first goal. You know what I mean? They were playing a very safe, a very slow, methodical kind of game. You know, even when sometimes you see Pepe will get the ball, his space behind, he, rather than go down there, he'll come back and come back inside. Yeah. There's a lot of safety going on with mm. the play. It's like if you, haven't, if you haven't built it up in a way, Manish, where it's how the boss maybe want it to be going, then everybody stops doing that and comes back and it gets very, very tough to watch. Talking of that cautious approach, is that what... We've been speaking a lot already, actually, about Arsenal's inconsistency this season, and he's touched upon it there. But in a way, Ian, with all said and done, was it not almost inevitable when you feature so many youngsters in your starting eleven? That what? The inconsistency. 
Well, no, because, well, the thing is, we, we've been very fortunate with the, the fact that the, the youngsters that we've put in have been consistent. Saka, again, for me, Saka should have maybe started, he should have started at left back on, on Thursday. Instead of Xhaka? Absolutely, absolutely should have, because you saw what he's capable of doing, you see the, how, how listless we were, you know, we, we needed some thrust from somewhere, we didn't have it anywhere, and I think that that was a mistake from the manager's point of view, but at the same time, you know, you talk about consistency, I think that he's talking about people like, like Willian, like Pepe, those players we need, needed more from. I think Pepe started to get into a little bit of form and then for some reason he was in and out of the team, in and out of the team. And so it's very hard to get consistency when you're not getting the consistent game time. So from, from that point of view, that must, that's firmly with the manager. But I don't think that there's many games I've watched and I've seen Emil Smith-Rowe and Saka not play and Tierney not play extremely well. They've been very consistent and it's to, to, to a standard that you'd ex you wouldn't expect, um, expect it from because young players can be inconsistent because they're, they're young players. And would you like now Arteta to look more to the youngsters, maybe even the likes of Balogun? Absolutely. To be, to be featuring more between now and the end of the season? Uh, yes, but um, it's, it's a fine balance. You've got to give them experience, the, the young players coming through. You don't want to put the, the whole burden on them. We spoke about uh, needing more from senior players and being patient with the performances of, of younger players. But I'm sure he'll be starting to think of, of next season. I'm sure he'll be starting to, to think about how to get more minutes and more experience into these players. But it's a fine line. You don't want to do that and finish the season with three defeats. You want, you want to do that but finish in a positive way because that's what the club needs at the moment. It, the club needs positivity. So if Mikel Arteta can win three games uh, after this, it's more positive. After the Chelsea, Palace and Brighton, that one was seemed like a decent couple of fixtures to have a look at. More of the other youngsters who've been shining in the academy. Yes, you know, I mean, we've got some good players and, uh, you know, someone like, it's like Reese Nelson, I feel for Reese. Um, you know, he got pulled back from being on loan abroad in Germany and then, you know, he's come back, he can't even make some match day squad. I know we had a big game in the under 23s the other day, under 20, maybe under 18s, I'm not sure, but, you know, on Friday, and people like Aziz, people like Florian Balogun, I'd like to see them in the match day squads now. I think the fans would like to see something like that so as it can give them a little bit of a lift for what may be coming because now, you know, you look at it at the moment you think, where's the signings going to come from? Is it going to have to be more youngsters? And if the youngsters are coming in, these are the games maybe where you'd like to think that they should have been at least in the, in the match day squad to maybe get 10 minutes, 15 minutes, let's have a look at them. Give the, give the fans maybe something to look forward to because at the moment there's not a lot to look forward to apart from Saka's form and Emil Smith Rolls form. And looking at Arsenal's up and down fortunes this season, in many respects, was it represented in those 90 minutes today? Yeah, because like the manager said, you know, we we, we spoke about it Leon there. We started very slowly, very you know, nervy. They scored a goal, then all of a sudden, you know, I mean they get a little bit more confidence, score another goal, and you're thinking, right, go and finish it off. Now you've got a lot. Then West Brom score, and like the manager said, they were very nervy, got very afraid of what was going on, and then I mean, Willian came up with the free kick, fantastic free kick. And, you know, it's, it's settled the game down. But we're talking about a team that are relegated. They are relegated and they're in relegation. They've been in relegation positions for the whole season. And we were very nervous. 